We're back at the foothills of the Great Smoky Mountains in East Tennessee. No matter where I go or what I do, this place is always home. Knoxville is special. This scruffy city on the banks of the Tennessee River is where I earned my degree and where I got my start behind the microphone. In the early 1980s, 11 million people from all over the world descended on Knoxville for one of the most popular expos America has ever put on. I attended the World's Fair many times during its six month run and loved every minute of it definitely a highlight from my childhood. With a growing population of just under 200,000, Knoxville is more popular than ever. People gravitate here for its natural beauty and some of the nicest, most hospitable folks you'll find anywhere. Downtown Knoxville is experiencing something of a renaissance. The arts and culture are alive and well here, from museums and galleries to one-of-a-kind performance venues and regular street festivals. The city's main thoroughfare, Gay Street, is lined with dozens of shops and restaurants, while nearby Market Square is the undisputed heart of Knoxville. Today I'm going to take you around this awesome place and show you 10 things you must do when you're visiting Knoxville. All of that and so much more straight ahead from East Tennessee. At the corner of Summit and Gaze Streets is the official Knoxville Visitor Center. It's your destination for all things about the greater Knoxville area, with detailed maps and attraction brochures. It also has a nice selection of locally made products as well as souvenirs. One more thing makes this visitor center unique. It's a live performance venue with a stage where three times a week at noon, you can catch the Blue Plate Special. Some of the area's top music acts broadcast live on WDVX FM from this room. We have more information about the Blue Plate Special on our website. To truly understand how this place went from being a rough frontier settlement to a grand state capital, you need to tour one or a few of Knoxville's historic homes. Preservation groups have done an excellent job to ensure a number of historic jewels across the city are maintained for future generations. James White was the founder of Knoxville, who settled near this location on a thousand acre grant in the 1780s an important structure in the area's history, it served for a time as the capital of the territory. Today, the city's first home offers a glimpse into the daily existence of early settlers to this region. Blunt Mansion is Knoxville's only National Historic Landmark and the city's oldest operating museum. This fine wood frame dwelling was the family home of William Blunt, appointed by President George Washington to govern the Southwest Territory. Blunt was a signer of the U.S. Constitution and helped guide Tennessee to statehood. If there's one historic property you should make sure you visit in Knoxville, it should be Blunt Mansion.
Growing up here, one of the things that ignited my love of history and appreciation of the arts was being exposed to the world-class museums that can be found in the city. Located in the 1874 Customs House at 601 South Gay Street, the Museum of East Tennessee History tells the stories of the people who have called this area home over the centuries. Open seven days a week, there are interactive permanent displays and special exhibits that take a deep dive into the events that made this region into what it is today. On your screen, current admission prices for the Museum of East Tennessee History. Other museums you should check out include the Knoxville Museum of Art at World's Fair Park and the McClung Museum of Natural History and Culture on the University of Tennessee campus. Also, the Museum of Appalachia, 20 minutes north of Knoxville, is one of the best museums you'll find dedicated to Southern culture. I'm right now on Knoxville's Gay Street. Somewhere near where I'm standing at the intersection of Gay and Church is where the 1796 Constitutional Convention was held. That resulted in the founding of the state of Tennessee. Gay Street went on to be the city's first paved street in the mid-1850s and was extended to become the first public bridge across the Tennessee River. Today, Knoxville's popular Main Street is home to a lively arts and cultural scene, with regular live music performances at the Bijou Theater, and everything from dance and opera to Broadway shows and classic films at the opulent 1920s Tennessee Theater. Many of Gay Street's historic buildings house unique restaurants you'll only find in Knoxville, along with homegrown dessert parlors and one of the coolest spots in the southeast where you can hang out with friends while enjoying a few rounds of bowling. Mast General Store is known for its wide selection of wearable merchandise, home goods, and everyone's favorite, the Candy Barrel, where you can stock up on sweet treats from your childhood. This is the 100 block of Gay Street, where you'll find one of Knoxville's newest bookstores, Addison's, specializing in rare and odd books from centuries ago. Something that has fascinated me and so many locals about downtown is Underground Knoxville. It was created a century ago when the original Gay Street Viaduct was constructed. The street was raised one story to meet the viaduct, leaving an entire story underneath. While most of underground Knoxville is not accessible, Arrowmont School recently opened a gallery in a space considered part of the underground. Since the mid-1800s, Market Square has been a popular community gathering spot. Things looked a lot different here a century ago. At that time, a large market house dominated the middle portion of the square. The bronze market house bell was used by the city's police chief to signal major emergencies and reportedly could be heard in all parts of Knoxville. Next to the bell, this statue honors three women who campaigned for the state to ratify the 19th Amendment, giving American women the right to vote. Some of the city's best eateries and shopping can be found on Market Square, a good mix of chains as well as locally owned mom and pop places. Today, this stage plays host to live music performances throughout the year, and the rest of the space is home to a regular farmer's market and seasonal special events. 
Knoxville's most iconic structure stands 26 stories tall. And as a native East Tennessean, I can tell you at no time has it ever served as a wig shop. The Sun Sphere was constructed for the 1982 World's Fair and is one of only two structures that remain from that event, changing the Knoxville skyline forever. There's a $5 charge to take the elevator ride up to the fourth floor observation deck, which offers breathtaking 360 degree views of the mountains and the city. While there, you can learn more about the tower's construction and the region's history. Of course, pop culture buffs might best recognize the Sun Sphere from a classic season seven episode of The Simpsons, where Bart learns the tower is being used to store some wigs. Did you attend the 1982 World's Fair? If you did, be sure to share some memories with us in the comments. Marble City Market is one of downtown's newest dining destinations. Featuring an impressive lineup of local vendors, this bright modern food hall offers something for every taste, even really finicky ones. Myrtle's Bakehouse is a local bakery known for its cookies, which weigh in just shy of half a pound. We have a link on our website that will lead you to a directory of food options available at Marble City. Ask any local and they're likely to tell you one of their favorite things to do is hit the lake. Knoxville is very lucky to have nine major lakes surrounding it, which offer everything from world-class fishing, a variety of water sports, and other fun outdoor adventures. The lakes are a short, easy drive from the downtown area, free to visit, and a great way to soak in the region's natural beauty. Some other places you can get in touch with nature in the Knoxville area include Iams Nature Center and the Knoxville Botanical Garden. Best of all, both are free. With all there is to see and do in downtown Knoxville, we recommend choosing one of the hotels in the downtown core for your base of operations. In the shadow of the Sun Sphere, the Tennessean and adjoining Marriott has just under 400 well-appointed rooms, some of which overlook downtown Knoxville's largest green space. Located on Market Square in a building dating to the 1870s, the Oliver has been lovingly renovated and pays tribute to Knoxville's rich heritage while offering the amenities you expect from a modern boutique hotel. No matter where you go in the Knoxville area, the mountains always seem to beckon. If you've never paid a visit to this region, set aside some time to explore the Great Smoky Mountains National Park. Travel through the tourist towns of Pigeon Forge and Gatlinburg, where you'll reach the most visited national park in the country. Once at this expansive natural playground, you'll find miles of hiking trails, mountain streams, and some of the best vistas on the planet. And don't forget those gorgeous waterfalls. You'll likely fall in love and make visiting the Smokies a regular thing. That's it, 10 things you must do in Knoxville from a native East Tennessean. What would you add to the list? Let us know in the comments. We always love reading your suggestions. Stay updated with our latest content by subscribing to the channel. It's free and activate the notification bell so you know when new tips and guides are released. More information about the content on this channel, including helpful maps and links available at our website. As always, Thank you for watching. From East Tennessee, see you next time.